Hey there everyone, as always, welcome to the channel, and thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich, and nine times out of ten, we're talking about drones, uh, imaging, building our small drone business, and today we're going to jump right into something um, that I had talked to folks on my Patreon channel about last week, and that's making 3D models from video. So it doesn't sound like a normal standard thing, but you know, there's more and more tools out there. Um, allowing us to uh, do more photogrammetry and other types of work. And so what we're seeing up on screen is one of my client's locations. It's a new house build. I'm just going to play this. This is a very slow moving, slow paced uh, video around my client's new build. So it's coming together really nicely. Now, we had offered doing a 2D or 3D model to the client. They didn't have any interest in it. And additionally, we're also flying really close to KPRC. We did our Lance request, we got our approval, so we're all good. But there is a fair amount of flight traffic even on Sunday mornings. So this orbit, this is actually 70 feet above ground level, and it's a simple orbit around the house. It's not an exact orbit um, since I mapped it out with a waypoint mission in Litchi, I could have used a full orbit. But as you can see, we're capturing a lot of great detail. We can also see maybe the porch area. We're not going to have as much detail. But so there we are. We've got this video. And the big thing is, can we turn this into a 3D model? And is it going to be a decent 3D model? So let's go ahead and close the QuickTime player really quick. And I am going to open up Metashape. So Metashape is one of the modeling applications that I utilize. There's Metashape Standard and Metashape Pro. What's interesting here is even with the Metashape Standard, we can do this. So we can actually turn a video into a 3D model. So in Metashape, I'm going to go to File, Import, and I would like to import a video. So right now I've already set myself up for this. So there is the video file that we just watched. It's called uh, Sky Browse Test, and I'm going to open this. And now the video import window pops up. I'm sure if you're a Metashape user, maybe you found this, maybe you've used it previously, or maybe you haven't. So we're going to pick an output folder here, and I'm just going to throw this onto the desktop and put a new folder, video to model. And we're just going to label that right there. I'm going to hit create. So now we've got a folder on my desktop where the still images are going to be uh, dumped. So what happens here in Metashape is they're actually peeling out still images, um, you know, for a particular amount of uh, space here. So we can do custom, small, medium, and large. And I'm going to go with large for this one. And we're going to start from zero, zero on the playback. And then it's going to end at the ending of it. Now that I've got this set up, I hit OK on this. And you will see that it says to me that the processing is in progress. Now, we're going to pause this video for a few minutes to allow Metashape to do this. It's going to take a couple of moments. And um, you know, it all depends on the size that we selected. And I went to the largest because I wanted the most overlap possible. So it's telling me that we definitely have a few minutes, uh, actually potentially 33 minutes here. So no, it's already dropped down to 13 minutes. So there we go. It shouldn't take too long. So I'll see you momentarily. All right. So here we are back again a few moments later and taking a look at Metashape, we've got uh, something going on over here. After running it through that video import, we've got a chunk with 65 cameras and the cameras are not aligned yet. By the way, before we just start processing this, I wanted to show you out on the desktop. I kept the desktop open. We made that folder uh, video to model. And what has happened here is that Metashape has taken 65 images um, out of the video. So if I click on one of these, all right, there's, uh, there's one of the images that will be overlapping with the next one. So it's taking the, uh, it's taking the images every so many frames. 65 images is not a lot, so this should go pretty quickly. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Let's go ahead and open that Metashape screen all the way. So now that we've got our images, by the way, down below, we can see the images in the film strip that uh, Metashape has picked out for us. Let's go up to the workflow, and we're going to align the photos. I'm going to go with a high alignment here, so this might take just a little bit longer, but that's okay. So you know, the more images we put into a photogrammetry program, the more uh, more time things are going to take. 
that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple and straightforward, whether you're uploading to the web or doing it on desktop like this. But we're seeing these cameras, um, we're seeing these cameras get picked up pretty quickly here. So 9% already. So we're just going to hang out for a moment and we'll come right back. And here we are. So I'm just zooming this out a little bit. We can see all of our points here. As you were watching the video earlier, you could see some of the sky was showing up and, you know, things in the distance. One of the nice things in Metashape is they do clean this up for us a lot. So I'm going to go back up to the workflow again here. We've aligned the photo. So now it's time to build that dense point cloud. Now, we've got it on high right now. We could lower it down, lower quality results. But um, I'm going to go ahead with high here because I do want to see, you know, let's try to generate a good model here. So I went ahead with the high processing's in progress. After this, we're going to be building our mesh and our texture. And then we're going to be taking a look at the uh, final model. And there we go. The processing is finished. If I go over on the left hand side of Metashape here and taking a look at that chunk with the 65 cameras, we now have a dense cloud, which I'm going to double click on. We're going to zoom back out. Look at how nicely Metashape has cleaned up a lot of those artifacts in the sky for us. Really nice job here. We are not done yet, though. We're now going to build our mesh. And after the mesh, we're going to build our texture. And then we'll take a look at the model. All right, so the mesh is finished. So finally, we're going to go build our texture. And we're just going with the defaults here. I'm saying OK to this. And we are generating the texture for us. So this should take mere moments here. And as you can see on screen, it's uh, it's moving along very quickly. And then we'll take a look at our final model here. So now, why would I do something like this? Um, the client did not want 2D or 3D models. But we were flying orbits around the home for time lapse video and time lapse stills. But since we had that video capture rotating around the home, I thought it'd be interesting to see what kind of model we generate out of this. Now, as I said earlier on, you know, we're close to KPRC. We do have our Lance authorization and everything, but we do want to minimize time on the ground there and, you know, make sure that we're being safe and that, you know, the flight paths in our area aren't coming across too close or into us. So, you know, having everything prepared going out to the site to pick up only what we need is very important. Now, if we were further away from KPRC, I'd probably still do a flight with um, Drone Harmony or, you know, with uh, Map Pilot Pro. I'd, I'd pick one of my um, 3D modeling apps for flight and utilize those to do some grids and some additional things. But out of this, let me see here out of this very simple orbit that we showed right at the beginning. Let's come in here and take a look. By the way, what a nice trimming job uh, Metashape did around um, these borders here. Let's zoom into this. This is looking really good. I mean, this is a very nice looking 3D model. We do have some problems and we've got some problems under the porch here because there's just not enough light coming into that area. Coming around the sides, though, this model is looking really good to me, actually. And other than also the front where they had some scaffolding going on, and the scaffolding was in the doorway, so that did uh, that did mess some things up just a little bit here. But overall, this is looking like a really good model, and it was generated based on the video that I was already shooting for the client. So maybe there's a moment when um, maybe you're doing a flight for a client, doing setups for time-lapse video, and maybe they don't have an interest in doing any models. We can still take from our flights and generate some pretty nice looking models here. Now let's have just a little bit more fun with this before I sign off. I'm gonna go over to the animation. We're gonna do a horizontal here. And I'm doing this, I'm going to go down into my animation pane again here on Metashape. And we're just going to play this through. So this kind of feels like the video that we shot for the client, actually. Um, you know, it's still pulled back. There still are some problem areas here because we weren't shooting specifically to build a model. But overall, this model is looking great. You know, this came out very nicely just from a simple short video flight around the same building. So like I said, uh, some of the folks on my Patreon channel asked about video into 3D models. So I figured I would answer their question uh, and I'd answer the question here on YouTube for those of you who are also interested 
and maybe building 2D and 3D models from video that you've collected from your job sites. All right, everybody, I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you again on channel real soon.